This micro lecture is about biomass chemistry. When you have a moment, please visit the shown link. It is about the 10 oldest living trees, and it is amazing to consider what these living things have achieved. I believe an important part of this achievement has to do with their unique plant chemistry and anatomy. I do not expect anyone to master this chemistry or even understand it well, but I want everyone to be familiar with what it looks like because it is an important part of understanding the rest of the topics. Please take a moment and review this week's learning objectives. Once you know what biomass is chemically composed of, you can see clear differences with oil. What I would like you to take away from this slide is that oil chemistry and biomass chemistry look very different. It is also important that you know that the O's stand for oxygen, the C's stand for carbon, and in the molecule drawings, every location where the lines come together at an angle represents a carbon. If this is confusing, please take a moment to look up chemical structures or chemical drawings on Wikipedia. The biggest difference between them is that oil chemicals are large straight lines, while the biomass chemicals are small, circular, and full of O's. They look very different, and this means that to turn one into the other we have to do a lot of work and spend a lot of money. We have actually been turning oil chemicals into biomass chemicals for a very long time at considerable cost. So it is ironic that we are now trying to turn biomass chemicals into oil chemicals at considerable cost as well. So where do all of these O's and circles come from? They come from the fact that biomass is basically composed of sugar polymers, and chemically, sugars are full of oxygen, the O's, and circles. This is not exclusive to one type of biomass. It counts for most of them, as the following slide shows. Therefore, if you process biomass for its chemicals, those chemicals will be full of oxygen and circles. They will not look like oils because biomass is not made from oils and long straight lines. It is made of chemistry rich in circles and oxygen. This theme will be repeated over and over as we learn about biomass conversions in more detail. Over half the weight of any dry biomass with cell walls can be attributed to sugar polymers. That means over half the weight of any dry biomass with cell walls is technically digestible if we can do the right processing. The only living things that don't have cell walls are animals and protozoa, so just about everything living on Earth is heavily composed of sugar polymers. This highlights the importance of appreciating this chemistry, because once we learn how to use it better, it will apply to a vast amount of things that grow on Earth. So why is there so much sugar in this picture? And what are cell walls? Well, to start, everything living you can see in this picture is composed of cells. Going a level deeper, all plants are composed of cells, and all plant cells contain something called a cell wall. The cell wall is important because it offers structural support and it helps the cell defend itself. As we discussed when we looked at the sugar polymers, all of these cell walls, regardless of the plant source, have a pretty similar construction and composition. The cell walls are made from different layers of something called microfibrils. The microfibrils are like tiny, tiny little composite fibers all woven together, and each layer of the cell wall contains a different weave. Given the weaving analogy, it's almost safe to say that a cell wall is like a cell's clothes, and it layers those clothes to stay protected. Now it gets a little more complicated, because we need to consider what those microfibrils are made of. They are made of chemicals called cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. It is important that you can at least associate these chemical names with their presence in all plant life on Earth. The microfibrils are predominantly constructed of cellulose chains that are connected by hemicellulose and wrapped up by lignin. There are many different ways to visualize this, and we will look at this version and two more. But please remember, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin are very important. 
This is another visualization of the chemistry of the microfibrils and how they are constructed. Microfibrils are exquisitely designed nanocomposites. This is the last microfibril visualization. This one is included because it shows some of the varying heat sensitivities of the components. This is important to consider later on when we begin discussing biomass thermal modifications. Cellulose is a sugar polymer. It gives strength to the cell wall. Cellulose fibers are what cotton and paper are made from. And about half of the cell wall is composed of cellulose. Hemicellulose is also a sugar polymer. Hemicellulose helps strengthen and connect the cellulose fibers to one another. Hemicellulose is in many foods and cosmetics, and about a quarter of the cell wall is composed of hemicellulose. Notice how hemicellulose has branches and slightly different functional groups than cellulose. It is very similar to cellulose in many respects, but extremely different in others. For example, hemicellulose is far more reactive and more mobile than cellulose. Lignin is a plastic-like polymer, very different than the previous two sugar polymers, but not so different from polystyrene that styrofoam is made of, or certain polyesters like the ones used for plastic bottles. Lignin does not degrade easily. Lignin helps stiffen and protect the sugar polymers. It is not digestible like the sugar polymers. It is really not used in too many commercial products right now. And like hemicellulose, about a quarter of the cell wall is composed of lignin. Please take a moment and look at the chemical structures. Notice how many of these are double circles. Those double circles mean they are aromatic molecules. As a rule, aromatic molecules are very difficult to digest. Interesting for the bioenergy field, gasoline is heavily composed of aromatics also. So hopefully, this makes more sense now, and when you are faced with appreciating the difference between oils like petroleum and biomass chemicals like liquid smoke or molasses, you will understand that the difference is that one is heavy in large straight lines and the other is heavy in circles and O's. One of the most interesting new sources of biomass being considered is actually an ocean animal called a tunicate. It is one of the only known animals on Earth that produces cellulose, and furthermore, it produces quite a bit. Tunicates are currently being investigated very closely as a new source of cellulose and protein. When you have a chance, please visit the attached link and learn more about this cool development.